Good morning, fellow Filipinos. The recently concluded Philippine elections have been hailed as the fastest ever in the history of the Philippines and with the biggest voter turnout. But even after this, did the elections truly reflect the will of the people? Because there are doubts and statistical improbabilities similar to a typhoon swinging over a junkyard and presto, after the typhoon passes, you have a fully equipped 747 that comes out of that. <laughs> How possible is that? Why were media outlets reporting election results or ER so fast on May 9 that even we are more advanced than the United States in reporting the results? And uh, in fact, voting had not ended in many parts of the country because of faulty uh, SD cards. How come the ERs were not broken down into regions, provinces, and cities, unlike in the 2010 and 2016 elections? The next question is even more critical. Who programmed the servers and the critical SD cards that went into the voting machines that churned out the results that virtually mirrored the pre-election surveys. Now, to shed light on these issues, I have three accomplished Filipinos here and fellow dedicated seekers of the truth who are accomplished in the field of in information technology. To my rightmost is a friend and confidant, Mr. Franklin Isaac who is a technopreneur, who is a retired banker, and who ventured into software development and developed electronic safety systems for the banking industry. Previously, he was a, an officer at uh, Citibank and two other banks. And he, has a, he is a past president of the prestigious uh, Financial Executives Institute of the Philippines and served as chairman of the Phoenix Foundation. Next is computer. At the middle is a computer with Augusto Gaslagman, who is the current chairman, national chairman of the Citizens Movement for Free Elections, or NAMFREL. And he was formerly a commissioner of the Commission on Elections. In the private sector, he was a former executive at IBM, Philippines, who is president, presently the president of Logic Management Incorporated and the Automobile Association of the Philippines. And then just to my immediate right is electronics engineer Eliseo Eli, but to his uh, closest friends, he's known also as Juni from Junior, who is a retired Brigadier General of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, where he was Deputy Chief of Staff for Communications, Electronics, and Information Systems. He was formerly the OIC Secretary, or Acting Secretary, at the Department of Information and Communications Technology, and former Commissioner of the National Telecommunications Commission. He also served as the Board Director and uh, as board director of Biantel, consultant of Globe, president of, uh, he was the president of uh, Truephone and board chairman of Next Mobile. Gentlemen, um, in the next few minutes, you will hear from these three distinguished uh, persons what probably and most likely transpired in these elections. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we'd like to thank our host here, Mr. Edwin Fernandez, for inviting us all here uh, to talk about this topic about electronic magic, probing the possibilities of irregularities in the May 2022 election. But then come this May 20. To election, we are all surprised that you know uh, the huge turnout of the voters 
and there was a long wait and then probably uh, the VCM probably was breakdown and the other things that were encountered during the election. Suddenly the reports started to come out and the reports were really something like, you know, what you call general uh, shocking uh, to us and couldn't figure out whether this was really the actual result. The first thing that we heard over the radio and the news is that uh, the, uh, the transaction, the, the total results were coming in in, in, in seconds and they're coming out in the, by the millions. These are the ERs that were being counted and transmitted from the VCMs. So when I came home and I started hearing the news, because I also got the news from overseas that it's over. After about an hour, over? Okay, so I asked myself what this particular question as far as I'm concerned here. My, my position here is, and as you can say, as Mr. Edwin would uh, as introduce me, I am an IT guy, but I'm more the banker type of an IT. So I produce the software for banks. But then, you know, software is, they're almost the same. You follow a certain processes, series of processes, and you computerize an operation. So let me share with you what we, what we saw in the, uh, uh, the actual, okay, this is the question that we ask ourselves, what really happened? And next question I ask myself is, how did this happen? Paano nangyari? Next question I <coughs> ask is, ano ba dapat nangyari? What should have happened? So <coughs> the first question cannot be answered. What happened? It's all up. Everybody's raising their, their some are crying why the votes were not properly counted. And how did this happen is what I'm going to talk about in as far as my position is concerned. Because we have two other experts here who will tell us more about what really happened and what should have happened and what things that would, would happen for the next election year. So let me show you a simple, the, 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 uh, the election process. This is the graph or a graphical presentation of the uh, actual process involved in the automated election system. If you are, it's a very simple. If you look at this diagram, it shows you a very simple process from the the person casting the vote through the BCM, you put your vote there, you get the receipt, and at the end of at the end of the day, all those who cast their votes, okay, this will be counted in the form of an ER election return, and it will be transmitted to two servers. One is the central server of the Comelec, and the other one is transparency server. What we got in the news was coming out of the transparency server. Meaning that at the end of the uh, election uh, hour, at the closing of the election hour, all of these VCMs will transmit in seconds all the ERs going to the transparency server. But then I, I, ask, I had to ask myself that if this were true, we would like to know, like, in, uh, like the 2016 election or even 2019, this was not the series that we were looking In other words, we were looking at counting or ERs coming from separate regions, districts, and these are being reported by the news. This did not happen. So I, I asked myself, being an IT, is that what, what happened really here? What I figured out is that, because I am not an election expert, uh, like some of our uh, uh, experts here, you know, they are familiar with this one. I said, what, what is that process inside the machine? They call it the SD card. The SD card is the key. I mentioned that the VCM is simply like your own laptop, but you don't have the, the uh, what do you call this, uh, the, 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 the operating, uh, the, the icon that says this is what is in, inside that VCM. This is the SD card, uh, what do you call the, uh, the secure dis digital card, like what you have <coughs> in your cell phone, which will now, which has been programmed to include the counting, very simple, it will count, and there's data inside and also the borders, total of which is not being transmitted. These are all done in a very fast manner. So, given that, I ask myself that if this is the case, you have the votes, shaded votes, 
you have the you have the SD card that reads the votes, okay, and then it will count that the total votes for cer certain uh, candidates are this total. Now, in the process, what what I ask myself is that in seconds all of these were being tallied and being sent to the transparency, but the results that were coming out, I mean, it's really improbable. I mean, impossible that we were seeing. This will be explained later on by one of our uh, resource persons here. He's, uh, he's an expert in electronics. <laughs> but I am, what I do is simply try to understand what is that program that was installed in the SD card. So I'll show you something that this is a very simple. If I were to do this program, I, I can do this because it's about four steps. You look at this one, I can do this. If you look at a complicated program, which I've designed for banks, this is what I call the anti-money laundering screen, which is a program that I give to the banks, and they can make sure that people who are doing illegal, illicit transactions, they can be caught with the system. These are, these are big uh, steps that we, we decided. It took us years to develop this one. This one is so easy. So what makes it difficult right now is that some changes are happening which are not, I would like to question that. So unless I'm able to take a view or probably look at this particular SD card, I will not be able to check whether what is being tallied or counted is the same as the ballots being cast. So I assembled my IT programmers, and I know that this, is, this can be done. For example, in a program, in a simple program, simple program, if I, if I say that if I read a shaded, uh, a shaded area as A, if I read it, I can count it as B, okay? So I said, in how many codes, few codes, lines, possible? Now, I go back, because this was presented during the, uh, I think, uh, to the uh, uh, IT and probably the watchdog, that they went through the SD card, it was processed, etc. Et but there was a lag period from the time that it was viewed to be a legal, legit, and the time that it was installed in 107,000 BCMs. We don't know what happened. We were not, nobody was able to check that particular SD card. So this is my task to probably say, hey, I'm gonna question that because it may not be the same. So my question whether the particular SD card has been so-called manipulated, which is possible, in two codes, 107,000, yes. What is next? That in the total, total, in other words, not counting, not r counting the votes, this SD card will even program me to say, out of these total votes cast, I will say somebody won 68%, somebody won 32 Is that possible? My IT people said, sir, that's possible. We can have an additional program. It says it will be read at 682. In other words, the votes are being discounted. They are not being read properly. And this is a big possibility. So we're challenging the uh, election body whether if they allow us, because they, there was no election, there was no IT body that says, okay, let's see this SD card as they were being transported, installed, and being read, and even after. So my colleagues here will probably validate now that this, this is my suspicion, and this can happen, and probably, probably, this has happened. That's why the series that we saw here would really confirm that there has been a possibly an irregularity in the system. So um, let me close by saying here that well, especially my role here, a little bit of this background. I personally came into the picture because I was voicing out in, in, my, in my Facebook. But then the word came around and one organization invited me and so was they, they invited Gus because he's the chairman of NAMPREL and uh, General Eli Rio here who is also an expert in the, uh, in the election. And we were together in front of this organization who, who really wanted us to show to them, to explain to them whether there was really some sort of irregularity involved. And we did present this to them. And they were convinced that, yes, so they said, we will not issue any congratulatory statement. 
to any of the winners. So I'd like to pass on to uh, my colleague here, the chairman <coughs> of NAMFREL, to probably <coughs> explain some more of what happened during that election day. Mr. Chairman Gas Lagman. Thank, Thank you, you, Frank. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my presentation will analyze what the COMELEC's automated election system is, and then I will also recommend a, um, a system that the COMELEC hopefully will consider in order that the system that we're going to use for our elections would be the appropriate system. Let us first analyze the timeline. When our elections was still manual, this is the timeline that we had. It would take five to 12 hours for the manual precinct counting. So it only takes that long. Sometimes in exceptional cases, it might take one day or 24 hours. It was the canvassing that during those times could take even as long as 40 days. In fact, one time it took 42 days to complete the canvassing, which is municipal canvassing, provincial canvassing, and national canvassing. So they thought because it was taking so long, we should automate our elections. Before we could change the election system, naturally, we needed a law. And uh, this is the Act Amending Republic Act 8436, as amended by 9369. An act authorizing the Commission on Elections to use an automated election system to encourage transparency, credibility, fairness, and accuracy of elections. It is the policy of the state to ensure free, orderly, honest, peaceful, credible, and informed elections which shall involve the use of an automated election system that will ensure that the process shall be transparent and credible and that the results shall be fast, accurate, and reflective of the genuine will of the people. I emphasize the word transparency because that's what the present COMELEC system does not have. It is not transparent. Well, let me go back to uh, to the timeline that I showed earlier. What happened here was that, as you can see, the precinct counting takes only five to 12 hours and the rest is canvassing. However, what they automated, what Comelec automated, was the precinct counting, thus saving five to 12 hours. But it cost us, it cost the Philippines 10 billion pesos. The servers, the laptops, automated the canvassing, thus saving over 40 days, and that cost us roughly 300 million. Since 2008, the obvious approach of automating only the canvassing, transmitting the election returns electronically, while keeping precinct counting manual, has been recommended to the COMELEC, but the recommendation has remained Unheeded. Now, why can't we trust the present COMELEC automated election system? It is not transparent to the voters. Nobody witnesses the counting. Only the COMELEC and the service provider, meaning Smartmatic, understand the process. Insiders can easily manipulate the results. Now, it's all up to us. Can we trust them? Now, even if both groups are trustworthy, a sound election system should nonetheless be transparent to the voting public. It is important that the voters not only see how their votes are being counted, they should also understand how the, the votes are being counted. But this is not true with the present system that we have. Let me quote from the book Code Red, Unobservable vote counting is inherently insane. What I suggest we employ instead is a hybrid system. Briefly, this system will entail 
manual precision counting for transparency, and automated canvassing for speed. We, we all know, everybody understands that we have a three-level canvassing system. First, at the city municipality level, we have a board of canvassers there. And then the output goes to the provincial board of canvassers. And the output of the PBOC goes to the national board of canvassers. That's the three-level canvassing that we presently have. After the manual precinct counting, the election returns, or ER, should be transmitted from the precinct's laptop to the city municipal canvassing center. But that election returns, the ER, should also be immediately uploaded to a public website for easy access by voters who would like to do their own tabulation and monitoring of the canvassing. Now, they do this, actually except that their uploading into the public website happens weeks after the elections. And my suggestion is that we do that immediately after the elections. Now, what, is, what are the ad advantages of the proposed automated election system? All steps of the election process are transparent to the voting public. Present tallying is done under the watchful eyes of the voters. Accuracy of the counting is very high. After all, manual counts are the basis of accuracy. Cost at approximately four billion or less is much lower than that of the vote counting machines that, uh, that's being used presently by the COMELEC, which is more than 10 billion pesos. Very minimal electoral board training and no voter training necessary. Vulnerability to cheating is very low, only retail, cheat, retail cheating, if any. Software will use open source, and this can be reviewed by anybody interested. Since only laptops and servers will be used, they can be purchased in any big city. Therefore, less logistics concerns, and there would be sales opportunities that would be spread around the country. No warehousing and equipment maintenance necessary, as all the machines can be sold to the, pri to the private schools and or donated to public schools after each election. A new set can be purchased every three years. And of course, no ballot box is snatching, as the results are transmitted electronically. The disadvantage of the proposed automated election system, present tallying will be 5 to 12 hours longer than using a vote counting machine. But this is out of a throughput time of about a week. So what's half a day or even one full day? If we shift to this transparent system, we would be one of the growing number of countries that have abandoned secret counting. Some examples, Germany, Ireland, the Netherlands, and several states in the United States. Why many countries abandoned electronic voting and secret counting? It's not transparent because precinct counting is automated. Nobody witnesses the counting. We feed our ballots into the vote counting machine and we don't see how it was being counted. There is no trusted document because all of the documents are machine processed. So it's the machine that's doing that without being witnessed by the voters. It's very vulnerable to tampering by an insider. Worse, nobody will know. If there have been tampering in 2010, 2013, 2016, 2019, and 2022, we don't know because we don't see anything. The software could have bugs and or malware. Voters are left with no choice but to trust the service provider, that's Smartmatic, and the implementers, and that's Comelec. It is not such a difficult decision for the Comelec to make. It does not require any change in the law. It will only lengthen the election period by perhaps five to 12 hours out of a week or so. For transparency, transparency and accuracy's sake, we hope the COMELEC would eventually make 
the right decision. I am now going to present some observations that we have made that would cast doubt on the result of this present uh, election that we did on May 9 of this year. No? And uh, I'll just go back and put more details on what uh, Frank uh, said on the end-to-end -end transmission path. No? I will, uh, there are around 107,000 uh, voting counting machine or VCM that were deployed in this election nationwide. 107,000 of them. No? And after, on May 9, uh, when voting closed at exactly 7 p.m. in the evening, all of these uh, uh, BCM nationwide no, transmitted when they can, and they were uh, received by the transparency server on a first come per se, uh, first come per serve basis. No? And uh, the transmission to the transparency server is what Comelec terms as the partial unofficial uh, results. The official result process through the uh, other uh, uh, the other uh, pathway. No? This means that the VCM transmit the ERs of the election results twice. Once to the uh, transparency server and the same trans uh, the same ERs are transmitted to the different uh, municipal level, provincial level, regional level, up to the national level. And it is in this path that the official count is uh, made. No? However, uh, we notice, we observe that by 8.02 p.m., just one hour after the closing of the election, uh, there were some uh, discrepancies or irregularities that we noted because this uh, first uh, batch of transmission consisted of around 20,000 uh, plus votes, no? And around uh, 26,700 VCM had transmitted just in one hour, uh, as uh, Frank have said, quite fast, no? He was surprised at the speed that uh, uh, 26,700 uh, VCM containing 20 million votes had been transmitted. Uh, partial and official results from the COMELEC transparent server from 8.02 p.m. of May 9 to uh, 3.18 p.m. of May 13. No? Uh, on, on May 13, the, the counting is almost done. Around 97, 98% were counted already by 3.18. No? Uh, and then here are the uh, tables no, of those, uh, the transmission or the uh, uh, publication of the results from the transparency server are done periodically, no? quite uh, about 15 minutes or so uh, that were uh, published uh, by uh, the media. No? And that this table were taken from what are published in TV, no? we got screenshots of uh, the president and the vice presidential uh, outcome or of the, uh, of the uh, uh, transparency servers. No? Okay, then here is where we observe something that is very, very almost uh, uh, statistically improbable. No? We notice that the uh, column where uh, the, the votes of Lenny were divided by the votes of VM and converted into percentage is very, very consistent. No? Since 8.03 of May 9, no? until the end of the counting on May 13 at 3, 8 p.m. So this was noted at once by the net netizen, netizens, and immediately Komele came out uh, through PPCRV, the watchdog, 
a, a, an explanation for this, no? And they just say that this is the expected result because of the whole surveys, no? Um, and this is really uh, the outcome of uh, a statistical law called the law of large numbers. Well, the law says that if you do a large number of tests or experiments, uh, the results will come closer to an expected value no? as more trials are being performed. For example, uh, and there are two aspects of this uh, uh, law. No? Uh, we have the strong law of large numbers, uh, which refers that the uh, expected result, uh, the result of your experiment will converge to the expected result very, very surely. No? Walang paltos. Talagang pupunta yan doon. So that's the strong lo uh, law of large numbers. But there's also the weak uh, law of large numbers. This means that uh, you conducted a poll before the election. You come up with some uh, expected values as to uh, how, how much or how many votes or how many percentage will each candidate get during election day. And using this uh, expected result, uh, and the election will show that they really converge to this, uh, or, or nearly converge to this probable uh, uh, outputs no, of the polls, then we call that the weak law of large numbers. So uh, ito ang difference. No? If you are, for example, tossing the coin or rolling a dice, uh, heads will fall at the same number of times as the as the uh, tails. No, if you are rolling the dice, doing that a large number of times, the one, two, three, four, five, six faces of that dice will fall to an average of 3.5. Now, every stati statistical student knows that. Uh, that is surely. If you come up with this large number of uh, trials, you will get surely these results. In the weak flow, of course, you have the uh, poll surveys, no? the results of the poll surveys. You have to wait, actually, for the actual election to come in, to be uh, finished, and the votes to be counted before you can say that these poll surveys are before you can say that the convergence of the result of the actual election will come near to what was being uh, predicted. No? So these are the data taken from the transparency server. No? This is now where we try to have a forensic investigation of the data that were spurned out by the uh, transparency server. No? So here, we concentrated first on the votes that were uh, garnered by BBM and by Lenny. We divided the votes every time that the transparency server comes up with an update. We divided the vote of uh, Lenny uh, by the vote of BBM. You, uh, the denominator is the uh, vote of BBM. And we get the uh, percentage. No? And you can see that it is very, very mm -hmm. constant. No? So that here we can, e in fact, extract a very simple linear equation mm -hmm. that will describe this type of, uh, of uh, event. No? So we can say that Lenny's actual votes, uh, if you multiply BBM actual votes, by the previous Lenny BBM vote ratio. So, so you'll notice that in the first, uh, uh, on the first result, we, don't, we just got the uh, vote ratio of 47.71, no? multiplied it by the 15,339,878, the second, the second uh, update. No? On, on 8.17 of the same day. 
we can get a predicted vote for Lenin. It is 7 million, uh, 318,015. Uh, that is the predicted. And the actual vote that Lenin got during that uh, update, the second update on uh, 817, was very, very close, or an error of only um, 29,000 votes, no? Or an error of less than 1%, less than 0.5%, in fact, or just 0.4. Then you'll notice as you go down the column of the uh, percentage error, you see again another consistency, no? And they included an error, because if you remove that error, that column of uh, the vote ratio of Lenny divided by BBM will exactly be the same from 47.7058232. It will be the same uh, in the May 13, uh, 3.18 p.m. Uh, result. No? So that's why an error has to be introduced so that hindi naman masyadong mabulgar. No? But anyway, we were able to come up with this uh, equation for the bbm lenny uh, uh, vote ratio. But we notice no, that this same linear equation is present in Pacquiao's. You now divide the votes of Pacquiao with the votes of BBM. We made the votes of BBM as the common denominator for all of this equation. And if you, again you do the same as you did in, uh, in Lenny's uh, equation, you will get uh, the actual votes. Actually, you can uh, uh, actually uh, uh, get the actual vote. Uh, this now, now uh, showing the uh, ISCO, no? And then it is true also for Ping. Okay, so this, uh, now the question, is it also true for the vice president? Yes, we found out it is. The same equation can be used to also predict, no? In its uh, updates, the uh, election returns or the votes that will uh, that Kiko, the second runner-up, will get, no. Plus, of course, a certain error, and you can see the error is very, very small, no. Para nilagay lang doon para hindi ma puna na yung column sa Kiko Sara vote ratio, because without that error, exactly, exactly, magiging 31.12. 58.504 yan from 8.02 p.m. of May 9 to uh, 3.18 p.m. of May 13. So, dito na lang ay may konting uh, uh, masabi na natin na this is statistically improbable. And some programming has been done. No? Okay, so so this is the uh, Tito Sara um, uh, result, no? Using the same simple linear equation that we did with Lenny BBM, no? In that equation could be discerned from all of the results of the uh, president and the vice president candidate. What is the significance of having the same linear equation describing relationship of batches of votes uh, of vote ratios, no? it will result, as I will show now, it will re result to a highly statistical improbable updates of the Comelec transparency server. Of here, I'm showing the major presidential candidates. That simple linear equation will give you this uh, result. No? Now here, we in its update, now starting from uh, 8.02 p.m. of May 9, we added the vote of BBM plus the vote of Lenny plus the vote of Pacquiao, Isco, Ping, and get a total of the five candidates. No? Now, if using the total now as the denominator, if you divide the votes uh, BBM got, you will get 60%. You divide the uh, Lenny's vote by the total, you get 29%. Pacquiao votes 5%, and Iscos 
4 and thing 2, no? And this is uh, what the poll surveys more or less have predicted, no? That these are the percentage that will come out, um, plus or minus a certain margin. But what is noticeable is that if you go down the line up to the end of the counting on May 13, hindi nagbago. No? Hindi nagbago ang mga uh, percentage votes or yung at least yung, yung ranking nitong uh, mga kandidato. BBM is of course first at uh, 60%. Lenny is uh, uh, second at uh, 29% or so. Pacquiao is third at 5% or uh, 5 points or 6 percent, is called consistently 4 percent all throughout, and Ping Lapson consistently 2 percent. This one now, uh, the law of large number, we really have a hard time <laughs> predicting this because how can you say that at exactly 8.02 p.m., May 9, one hour after closing the uh, the voting, you come up with the re expected results. No? That means that the large number where supposedly in an experiment you can come up with the expected result uh, in a weak uh, law uh, of large number. I uh, lumabas, lumabas. Not only for one candidate, but for all candidates. Ibig sabihin, itong limang kandidato na ito, their expected result no, came out one hour after the counting. And tuloy-tuloy na yan, hindi na nagbago until the end of the counting. No? Uh, to show you, if you have again a dice, now put two dice now. Uh, two dice, no? You roll them, uh, die one, die two, die three, roll them a uh, number of times. Would you expect die one and die two to get the 3.5 expected result at the same time? I think uh, you get better probability than being hit by a lightning twice in the same place and survive. <laughs> Uh, the statistician, uh, the mathematicians can compute that, no? But what is the probability of having not only the president and the vice president candidates having on the first bots of uh, the uh, uh, transparency server, do na, do na na converge lahat yung uh, result, no? Almost at the same large number, no? Even if you do that, so many, uh, if you have, for example, eh, two dice, may hirap nang imagine na uh, at exactly, uh, let's say, 2,000 tries, yung dalawang dice na yon nag 3.5 na, nag -plotting. How about if you have five dice? You throw them, and at exactly a large number, sila lahat nag-converse na sa 3.5. Okay. Try to compute the probability of five die thrown a large number of times, but at, at an exactly same large number will uh, converge to the expected. That is what exactly, if you cannot imagine that, then you cannot imagine this also. No? That is exactly what happened during our May 9 election. Now, also for the vice president, the same. The same, parang nagtapong ka rin ng dice so, so many number of times. And the three of them, at exactly after uh, 8 or 2 p.m. of May 9, exactly already converged. So sabay-sabay na converged sa, uh, sa expected result ng uh, poll surveys. No? Uh, where Sarah is number one, Kiko is number two, and Tito is number three. But... That did not happen, that did not happen, or we did not see that pattern in the senatorial candidates, no? In the senatorial candidates, yung mga reporting nila nag intersect no? Nung una, mas mataas si, uh, si, si uh, Cayetano, no? Pero na-overtaken siya ni Subiri, and I, I saw some uh, results where Hontiveros 
uh, was over the uh, Ejercito and Estrada and in some uh, update na overtake kami ni Ejercito mm. si Padilla, no? So this is more or less normal, no? Now, the question. The same ballot that were counted by the transparency server coming from the different VCM, uh, from the uh, from the ERs of the different ER, contain the same for president, vice president, and 12 senators. No? The same ballot. And supposedly, uh, this was counted in the same order when it arrived the transparency server. No? Hindi pwede yung binilang muna yung president and vice president tapos binilang at a later time yung senator. It is always, pag binilang mo president, you have to uh, put in the result of the plan. Hindi mo ma-separate yan sa transparency server. Pero if the law of large numbers, what they are claiming, can happen for the president and for the vice president candidates, why did it not happen sa mga senators? No? Ang poll survey before election, number one yan si Tulfo, Ligarda 2, and three lang si Robin Padilla. No? Why did that not happen? Why? Bakit? Oh, talagang nakuha nila, nakuha ng, ng pollsters yung resulta ng President Pen. But using the same law, but hindi nila nakuha yung sa, sa senator candidate. Well, sabi, marami magsasabi kasi 12 ang mapipili. But that's irre irrelevant really, no? Because uh, the law of large number says that, uh, well, Impossibly talaga, no? Na you have seven dice, na you roll them, and at exactly the same large number, parin pareho, they will now converge to the uh, expected result. So, anyway, does this uh, picture look normal to you? Well, marami nagsabi, yellow, dapat red yung, yung uh, mga watermelon, no? Hindi dapat yellow yan. But that's beside the point. This, is, this looks natural to you, di ba? How about this picture? Is, does this look natural to you? <laughs> because the cube watermelon has been programmed. So in the result coming out from the transparency server, something does not look natural to us. And if that something, uh, Sabinila, law of large number, yes, but it is more probable that it has been programmed. No? Bakit hindi nila ipasok yon sa kanilang sinasabi? And therefore, the question of Frank is, was it really programmed? Uh, so here, I just for uh, uh, to show you, differentiate how the uh, curves look. No? Talagang almost straight, uh, flat yung mga curves ng president and vice president. And ang um, ang gulo ng uh, curves ng senators. So, so ang, ang next question. Okay, kung magawa pala ito, how was it done? No? Well, we don't know until we really come up with a honest-to-goodness forensic investigation. But, of course, uh, these are the ideas that can crop up in our minds. No? Only the, uh, in the whole process, only the SD cards, no? yung memory cards, can be are altered, no? Uh, all these SD cards are uh, precinct specific, no? Because uh, it tells the, the VCA machine has a program. Yan, uh, it went into a source code review and everything, no? They don't have to touch the VCA machine. So itong SD card is very important because it tells the VCA machine that if you see something in this circle, you uh, put that vote to a certain candidate. No? So the ballot are printed. Walang, walang kaiban <laughs> sa national, sa vice president, sa, sa president, vice president, senator. Pero doon sa local may bago. Iba yung mga pangalan sa city of Manila, iba ang pangalan sa Quezon City, sa Munting Lupa City, and all other parts, no? So it is precinct specific, no? Uh, 
kung sabihin mo lang doon sa SD card na at ito ay na-describe na ni, ni Frank, kung ano yung nasyadan doon sa 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 uh, balot, ibigay mo yung boto sa iba. That can be done in the SD card. You don't have to touch the VCM machine itself. No? All other equipment like the VCM, yung transparency server and anything, you don't have to touch that. Only the SD SD card. No? And there was a window of opportunity. Okay, kailan kaya na alter yun? You might ask. There was a window of opportunity. No? Uh, na umpisa ang Comelec to print the ballots and configure all the SD cards no? without any witnesses. In fact, kung hindi pa napuna ng NAMFREL, chaired by uh, Gus Lagman, hindi pa sila magpapapasok ng observer. But by that time na nagpasok na ng witnesses, Seven. around 70% of uh, ballots have been printed, more than I think 70% of the SD card has been configured. No? So, walang nakakaalam kung ano nangyari doon sa 70% na na-configured na. Then after that, of course, ka na. The, but to do this, we estimate no, that you need only around 50% of the SD card to come up with this result. Mm -hmm. You alter half of the SD card, pabayaan mo na yung other half na to, to count uh, uh, normally you will still get the result if you are able to uh, reconfigure just one half of the number of SD cards. And that is through a wrong program that you can insert in the SD card, then you assign it to the different precinct. No? Dito rin, uh, lumalabas na pwede rin yung mga local uh, candidates makapagsaw-saw bayaran mag, or mag whatever no na pwede ipasok sa SD card yung na kung ano yung naiboto ng mayor A ibilagay mo sa boto ni mayor B just a simple SD card okay and ito nga uh, we show a, a the program no very very simple you don't even have to know what is the you just simply count the ballots and based on the number of ballots that is fed in that BCM you can come up with this very simple um, uh, equation no? to, to come up. It's a very simple algorithm. So the errors introduce a pattern. No? Hindi mo makikita ito kung you just select uh, parang piece, uh, jigsaw puzzle ito composed of 107,000 pieces. No? Kung kukuha ka lang isa, hindi mo masabi yan. Pero pag na pattern na yan, as in the uh, the kung makita na yan sa, sa uh, transparency server, makikita mo na yung pattern dito na lalabas. No? But syempre, large number na yan, oh, that is, that is explained by the large number. Pero masyadong hindi, in other words, parang pina, hindi nila uh, kinonsider the very improbability na lahat-lahat ito mag-converge doon sa uh, uh, first out or first spots, no? And yan ang, ang question. Okay, uh, well, ang kwan na ito, it is, I have to emphasize this, it is the lack of transparency in this election that casts doubts on the incredible results, no? These are again first of the series. BBM got the highest number of votes ever, no? twice, almost twice than what uh, President Duterte got in 2016. No? At popular na nga si Duterte, but he got almost twice, first time. First time in history that a vice president got higher votes than a president. First time that both president and vice president got higher votes than the senator top notcher, si Robin Padilla. And that again is statistically improbable. No? Uh, and then the highest voter turnout ever. To have this work, you need a high turnout of voters, no? So, ito yung mga observation that I just described. Uh, um, I, uh, you can study it on your own. And uh, as a conclusion, this 
It is never the intention of this uh, presentation to question the legality of the result of the election, but rather to question its credibility. No? It begs answers to the questions brought about by this observation, because if these questions are not answered, it will be unfair to both the winners and the losers of this election, and more importantly, it will be unfair to the Filipino people. No? So this question must be answered, not to be fair to BBM and Sara, if they if their uh, winning is uh, really uh, true. No? Now, this pre presentation focused on the fact that there was lack of transparency, that's all. And the uh, solution that uh, uh, Gus Slagman gave you would be the answer to this. But uh, right now, we are just focusing on how to uh, go, move on with this result. No? And here, uh, uh, Frank has proposed a uh, citizen-initiated random manual audit if you will be allowed by Comelec. Thank you very much.